Hello everyone, Mr. Swinger One here. Uh, figured today we'd talk about her shifters. Um, and we're looking at my Scat Pack sticker that I ordered from Classic Industries. Uh, this thing's about five or six inches in diameter. A little too big to put in my rear window, on my rear side window, my darts. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It's probably going to end up hanging in the garage or something. Um, but I want to talk about a little history. Um, and I'm reading this from Wikipedia. I'm going to paraphrase. I'm not going to read all of it. Um, what I know about Hearst is they started out War Mr. Pennsylvania, which is, if anybody was in the Navy, Naval Air Station Willow Grove, it's right in that area. It's uh, Route 611 north of Philadelphia. Um, Hearst Performance was originally named Hearst Campbell. company started in 1958 with George Hearst and Bill Campbell. They had an auto repair shop. Um, they uh, they were discovered by a customer. Took his car to their shop for repair. He saw their uh, the promise. They were promising, innovative young man. He invested in their company. They started making aftermarket bumpers for VW buses. Um, they made the jaws of life. But their real claim to fame was the shifters. Um, and you, you know, you if you look back to the 60s of four-speed drag racing, or even muscle cars, the Hearst shifter was prominent. The factory started using them. Uh, I believe Pontiac was one of the first. The GTO, 64 GTO, would have had a Hearst shifter from the factory. Um, then they had the aftermarket, the uh, drag race stuff. So there is a difference between the factory Hearst shifter and a competition plus or even a super shifter and we'll, and we'll talk about that um, there was the original Hearst company lasted from 1958 to 1970 um, then uh, George Hearst and you know Campbell sold it uh, and it became absorbed by um, a company called Sunbeam Products today it's owned by Holly, Mr. Gasket, those guys. So like Holly, Mr. Gasket, Hearst is all the same company. Um, George Hearst died in 1986. Lawrence Greenwald, the original investor, died also in 1986. Um, oh, here we go. Let me correct something I said. Mr. Gasket. Sunbeam sold the company Mr. Gasket in 2007. B&M Racing and Performance Products bought the Hearst brand. This is off Wikipedia, so um, I stand corrected. Mr. Gasket does not own it. Um, B&M Racing and Performance owns it currently. Uh, I'm going to talk today about the vintage shifters. So keep in mind there are modern shifters for modern cars. The Challenger, the Mustang. That kind of stuff. The uh, the the transmissions with internal shift shift levers. I'm going to talk about the old stuff with external shift rods. Um, I'll probably stick the Mopar uh, A833, but you can put a Hurst on any four speed um, with external shift levers. Classic Hurst. So you know you got your Chevys, Muncies, Saginaw, stuff like that. Uh, moving on. I don't want to talk too much. I want to get into actually looking at the parts. Um, I have a factory shift mechanism and I have a competition plus. We'll look at the differences. We'll look. I do have a handful of handles. We'll look at some handles. And then um, I believe I will post links if you actually want to rebuild a shifter. There's a guy out there, I believe he's called Gearbox Video. The guy has a trans shop, he specializes in it. I'll post a link to his channel I do not have any affiliation with him don't know him um, I just know he rebuilds this stuff professionally so I'm not going to get into rebuilding it I just use it I know how to hook it up and set it up the and adjust it I've never rebuilt one I've never had to I never wore one out um, but anyway moving on we'll get into it here all right we're looking at a factory um or OEM Hearst shift shifter mechanism. Um, this here would come on 
this would be factory OEM equipment on uh, my 70 swinger there are no shift stops you can see the hole there for it um, it's pretty much identical to a competition plus there's a hole there so I mean if you wanted to you can drill and tap this and put shift stops in this is also oh the holes for the linkage rods are smaller too um, competition plus has bushings that are meant to be replaced the holes are bigger you put a bushing in and then the bushing is sized down to this where the factory rods would fit in um, the OEM factory shifter had specific linkage rods to the application and mount points positions for each vehicle and they had no shift stops they weren't meant for racing this is also a drop-in or what they call bayonet style um, if you look at this and we'll look at the competition plus we'll see the difference there's pieces missing here I believe I do not know I believe it's a wedge like the handle drops in and a wedge goes in there or maybe on each side maybe somebody can elaborate on that I don't have them parts um, I always ran a competition plus on my dart I have the it's something you would have went out and bought because it's a more beefier heavy duty deal um, but yeah that's the factory shifter these are still around I see these going for a hundred bucks and it's for the guy who wants his car to be factory original restored I mean that's the only reason I could see running this um, you're gonna be mild mannered with this you're not gonna be hard shifting or racing because you can bend parts you can egg out these holes the linkage rods can bend also the shift forks in the transmission can bend something's gonna bend either way that's why the shift stops are there so that the the actual force stops here at the handle it doesn't go down through the linkage now we'll take a look at a competition plus All right, as you can see, have the shift stops. So the handle, when you pull back the second, internally it's going to hit the stop. You're going to you adjust it as a jam nut here. You loosen it. You turn that in. You set this up before you bolt the boot down. There's one there for going to first and third, and that's second and fourth. Also. You have the bigger holes for the bushings. Um, here's a bushing. The bushings downsize to that factory hole where they fit in there like that. You can change these at the strip. You can lay under the card, change these in a matter of minutes. Um, they have nylon ones. These here are a, I'm not an engineer, I'm not sure the metal, but this is like, you can hit these with a hammer and they'll break, like ceramic. So, if you get too, if it gets too intense, these will break, you'll feel the slop in the shifter, you'll know you gotta fix it. But it prevents the damage to the linkage rods, to the internals of the transmission. So the failures are designed to happen up here in the shifter. Quick and easy to fix and cheap. You don't want to bend the shift forks out to tear the transmission apart. Another thing about four-speed racing, it's sort of nostalgia now, but you gotta remember in the old days, um, I think there's there's Herb McCandless had a video. I want to say a few years ago, 2018, 19. They interviewed him. He said he ran a slick shifted four-speed. What that meant was they modified the internals. Uh, it could have been grind, grinding every teeth off the synchronizer, every other tooth, to make that thing go into gear fast and to minimize breakage. But what you got to remember is they were probably rebuilding that transmission every two or three runs, or they had spares. They always had synchronizers. They had parts. I would not recommend grinding every other tooth off your synchronizer if you're the average guy driving these cars to car shows on the street.
because it gets expensive, you're going to always have to be into your transmission replacing synchronizers. So, point is, keep in mind, racers have parts and they have the money. They had the sponsors. Their cars were modified. They weren't running street transmissions on the drag strip. They had their tricks. And that's all I'll say about that. But let's talk about the Competition Plus. Um, it's meant to bolt on at the factory, shift their mounting point, and work with factory linkage rods. Had the shift stops, we already mentioned that, and then we talked about the bushings. Bushings are fit factory linkage, and the bushings are replaceable. And I think I said, yeah, the nylon or that that metal, that brittle metal that breaks easily and saves the rest of the uh, transmission. Another shifter that Hearst had was a Hearst Super Shifter. It was a pure competition piece with a specific mount point, beefier linkage, and short handle with short throw shift pattern. Factory linkage would have curves to fit in, curves in it to fit specific vehicles. The Super Shifter had beefier straight linkage, eliminating the situation where it may bend during hard shifts. The Super Shifter sits higher in the car, thus the floor has to be modified. Unlike a factory shifter where the shifter may be in a console or the same general location in each vehicle. That's why when you see a drag car, the shifter's usually sitting right up in the middle to the right of the driver. There's usually no passenger seat, just a roll cage around, a fire extinguisher. The shifter just kind of is just prominent in the car. It's sitting there because that's the only place it can be mounted with the Hurst uh, Super Shifter. It's a drag race only piece. And... Anybody that knows has seen them. They have the straight linkage rods, no curves. Um, all right, that's all I have on that. We're going to look at some handles now. I forgot to mention, I like the factory piece. The handles bolt in to the Competition Plus with that retainer plate and the two bolts. The factory was the bayonet style. Just drops in with a wedge. Um... But moving on, we have some handles. This here is the factory bench seat handle on my Dart Swinger 340. This is what Mopar would have put in it. You can see it has a bend and a curve. It's designed to come up over the bench. Um, it would have had a brown knob on it. I always liked the white. I guess that's a GM thing. I don't know. To me, the cue ball white's the best looking handle. And notice the shaft is round. I like to think these are the vintage and the newer ones are flat. Um, if I come across a round shifter and it's affordable, I'll buy it. This is a different bench shifter I bought. It doesn't have a curve at the bottom. It's a little bit. In my dart, the knob comes right up over the bench seat and rests like right above where my knee would be so or it's more like in the middle of my thigh so I like that but the handle in fourth gear is like right down over the seat so that's a choice I have for my dart I can you can swap these handles out like changing your socks um, again another white cue ball I bought this off a guy that ran it in a 64 either a Barracuda or Valiant it was an A body um, I asked him would it work with a bench seat. He's like, yes, it worked in mine, in my A body. Even though mine's a 70, they're very similar. This one here is a flat handle. Goes in my Fox body. This is a kit. It just bolts onto the Fox body. Another thing is they have numbers on them. Uh, generally with a Hearst, you, uh, you would sort of take crude measurements what you want in your car how high up it has to come what angle of a bend and then you would go from there but they all have numbers on them here's another flat handle with the T handle see how that one's flat and these are round I generally would jump on a round one if I seen one of the swap meet and it was priced right because I I consider the round ones to be the vintage pieces but I may be wrong I just when you go to a modern, go by the, what I notice, you go to buy a new modern Hearst handle, they're usually flat like this. Nothing wrong with the flat. It's just a way to date them, I think. So there's that. And as some of you know, I do have an e-body pistol grip in the dart. It's installed there. 
Some will tell you to run the B-body bench shifter. I like this because it's low. Again, it's down around where my knee would be. Actually, it might even be lower than my knee going into my calf, but I can reach it fine. It all depends on how ergonomically it suits you. Maybe a tall guy might want to stick up. But that's... I'm going to run that for a while, and like I said, if I get tired of it, I'll swap it out. It's just two bolts, and lift the boot up, two bolts, swap it over. I do have a new boot somewhere. That's the old boot. That boot's probably 40 years old. That was in the car when I bought it, but that's pretty much it with her shifters. The pistol grip's a whole other story. I won't get into that. There is a couple different ones, but this one here is an E-body pistol grip and as you know the e-body's had a console so a little console thing going on so that's pretty much it thanks for watching